Good morning and welcome to Yeni Meet 201, Careers in, Mechan uh, Careers in Mechanical Engineering. And today we have the pleasure to, to host Brian Grasshopper. Grasshopper. Yes. okay. Uh, class of uh, graduate in 04. Yep. Uh, thank you for coming back and thank you for coming and sharing your, your, your experiences with, uh, with our current students. And uh, let's start by, if you could tell us a little bit about your job, your industry, and what does it entail, and a little yep. bit of yeah. background. So, so I'm the <laughs> Vice President of Engineering for Aqua Water. Aqua okay. Water is an investor-owned utility, uh, water and wastewater. Actually, we're part of a larger utility called Essential that includes gas distribution services. Um, but those three utilities, we operate in eight different states. Um, so we're kind of like um, a municipality, like a city of Baltimore or DC or DC Water, WSSC, the local municipalities here, except that we're investor owned instead of governmental okay. or quasi governmental okay. in the case it's of private thing. Yeah, it's private exactly. Things. So um, that said, the investor owned utilities, you know, they don't just set rates and whatever they want, it's water, right? So it is state regulated and we operate in eight different states. Um, so it's, it's the engineering side of that managing basically the capital program um, for the utilities across eight states. And um, Aqua is a little bit unique. You hear about other investor-owned utilities, American Water, Cal Water, California. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of large centers, kind of more like the big municipalities. Aqua is a little bit different in that we're a bunch of small systems, okay. which I, I believe is really where the value of um, investor-owned utilities is. There's a large sort of backbone structure, the finance, the HR, all the backbone services can support you know, all the smaller utilities um, that are usually distributed that wouldn't otherwise necessarily have the funding uh, with a smaller, with um, smaller yeah, customer yeah, base yeah. To, to operate that. Um, Interesting. Uh, who would you say, uh, who would be interested in a job like yours? It's well, interesting. Let me turn yeah. the question. Yeah. What, I know you, after finishing here, you got a ma uh, master's degree in environmental engineering from yep. Hopkins. Uh, so how did you think about starting a career like that? Was it by accident or Yeah, by choice? I think that's fair. It was by accident. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was going to school here, I got summer internships um, at local consulting engineering firms, actually in Northern Virginia, um, and they focused on kind of forensics. Um, they did work when one of the shuttles um, had its issues, you know, on the tile. They, they did the forensics on the tile okay. that protected the shuttle, like what went wrong here? So we could hopefully not have the same type of disaster. They also did a lot of work for the nuclear power industry. They looked at the heat exchangers and even the fuel rods and kind of how could we clean these mm -hmm. chemical or, you know, uh, they actually ended up using the transducers to do a lot of um, submerged uh, vibration, really high frequency okay. vibration mm -hmm. to that, clean, that the, clean the, yeah, the, clean the scale off and keep mm -hmm. the heat exchange efficiency up. Um, but I was in the lab all the time, 100% of the time in the lab, which I loved because you know, we get into mechanical engineering sometimes because, I mean, and I talk about it a little bit later because we like breaking stuff, you know, yes. as a kid, I, I enjoyed my toys for a little bit and then I broke them to see what was inside, right? Um, and then you slowly learn how to put them back together and then here you learn how to build stuff. Okay. Um, and it was a lot of that, working in the lab, it was prototyping, bending tube, putting stuff together for testing these different cleaning mechanisms. Um, and that was awesome. But I knew as I was going into my final summer before graduating, like I don't have any in-office experience. Okay. So like, am I really marketable? And so I pivoted, um, actually ended up taking a slightly lower you know, pay rate to go in office and went to a firm in Baltimore, again, a multidiscipline engineering consulting firm, but they focused entirely on water, wastewater, at least the team I was on. So they were working for like the cities of Baltimore, WSSCs, DC waters, local towns I knew, but really never gave much thought to the pipes under the ground, right? Mm -hmm. I think like most people, and I was the same way, right? We don't really think about the water turning on or the toilet flushing until it doesn't. Exactly. Right? Well, you and don't and see it, it usually just... does. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember back then, and the power grid's gotten a lot more robust, right? We mm. don't really experience power outages like we used to, but I remember when I had just started in that industry, I think the year after interning, so spoiler alert, I took the job there. They did offer me one, and I worked like 11 years there and really loved it. Um, but I remember watching uh, uh, um, news you know, something, the power went out. It was, I think the Northeast had a big power outage. Mm -hmm. It was a really big one. Um, and it was probably somewhere in Baltimore. They were in someone's row house, like, 
hey, this is really bad, and yeah, we've been without power for three days, we're working with flashlights and candlelight, and in the back of the frame, a kid gets up, goes over to the sink, gets a glass of water, and goes back and sits down. It's like, hey, your water still works. You know? like, so you really don't think much about it, and neither did I until I got into the industry, and it's like, oh, there's a lot of work to do here, you know, replacing pipes, building new pump stations, expanding networks, um, certainly with the treatment, you know, stuff around here especially is 100, 150, 200 years old in some cases and it needs to be updated. Um, so we did a lot of that. Uh, the thing that got me into that was really the people more than anything. Like the people I worked with, the clients and the competitors even, the, you know, the other mm -hmm. consulting mm -hmm. firms that you competed you with to get the same work were just great people. Oh, I joined nice. the Professional Association for that American Water Works and met a lot more great people. But like just a but, wonderful industry of people. Yeah. So this semester I'm teaching heat transfer. Mm -hmm. And they did give a problem on, on the depth based on, on conditions, you know, the worst conditions for wind and, and temperature, how deep you should bury the pipes of the water. Okay. Pipes. So I'm, yeah. I'm working with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and around here I think we use like four feet, uh, I think it's four feet of cover standard. But I, I mean, through American Water Works Association, you'd meet people at seminars from across the country, right? There, I remember there was one person in Alaska I got to know who worked for Anchorage Utility. Mm -hmm. The depth of Barry standard there is like 10 or 12 feet. Yeah, I'm it's yeah. nuts. I can't imagine, if you have a simple water main break, first of all, you might never see it, right? Because it's 12 it's so feet so down, deep, you're yeah. just losing water, where's the water going? And depending on how you're metering, you may or may not realize but it, it. It gives you more protection. You know, yeah, you have to, because the frost deep. line is yeah. that deep. It's just, I can't imagine. So uh, briefly, uh, how how would you describe, how did your degree help in, in your career path? In, in, I mean, you mentioned all these engineering applications that I'm sure that, that some of the courses, yeah. yeah. I mean, I got into, like I said, mechanical engineering. It seemed like it would open out a lot of doors, and I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I liked math. I knew I liked taking stuff apart and trying to put it back together. Um, the certainly the thermodynamics was critical the fluids um, dynamics and when I started at the the company in Baltimore um, I was doing a lot of pump station design so okay. it's all hydraulics right it's, it's bigger pumps you know it was cool to get to do some 100 horsepower 500 horsepower now that said it's been done for 100 plus years right it's mm -hmm. it's look it up in the formula understand the formula and then build yeah. a lot of times right spreadsheets right. still head right? loss like calculations it's, that's exactly what it is yeah both major both on the water and wastewater and side waste water. yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. so Great. sometimes it'd just be the major back of the envelope like yeah we're gonna need a 500 horsepower pump and then you might say oh it's a 450 or a 550 mm -hmm. as you got into it at beyond a lot of times it's like 30% design, 60%, 90% final, so that you can kind of back and forth with the client and really most importantly the operations team. You know, a lot of times the client, and that's where I am now, right, the owner mm -hmm. side, we're just managing projects. We don't have time to get into the details, unfortunately, of everything, and so we we're, rely on these consultants. They know the details, and we're, we're just kind of, okay, really it's important to get to the, the operations team more than engineering. But your engineering background oh, yeah. helps tremendously. I mean, yeah. I mean, if somebody with a degree in finance would be in a position would be different. I mean, you understand the engineering, you know, you understand. Even though you're not getting the details, yes. you, you, can, you can see the situation. Yeah, oh no, the first 10 years, though, of my career was the details. <laughs> like, as on the consulting side, designing, you, you need an 8-inch diameter pipe, it's going to be 2,000 feet long, it's going to have two 90s and a 45, and here's your head loss. You need this size pump, if it's, it's, you know, right? it's going to be this velocity. There's also some kind of general guidelines, right? With wastewater in particular, you don't want it to go too fast because it'll scour a plastic pipe. Uh -huh. You don't want it to go too slow because then any solids will settle, settle out. Settle them, yeah. So you have those sort of brackets and then you tighten it up as you get into the real details. So my, my next question is, what do you find most rewarding about your work? And I think you've just answered everything. <laughs> uh, like I said, the people are great. And it was also something um, I, I, was, I could feel really good about, right? Like whether it's in the consulting side, the owner side, the operation side, which I dabbled in in between. <laughs> um, you're delivering water and helping, you know, remove wastewater, right? Yeah. It's like a pretty important fun Absolutely. fundamental yeah, fundamental part of society. No yeah, <laughs> um, and and it was described. I remember visiting a plant in Baltimore, a water treatment plant. Montebello is it's really nice. It was built around 19. 
hundred, like 1907. I remember because I had to look at the drawings to figure out how to tie a pipe together <laughs> um, into something existing that had been in the ground for that long. But uh, it, the operator, the head operator of that plant was giving us a tour. We got to see these big sedimentation basins, which are, you know, it's basically settling the clean water, letting the solids suspend out with mm -hmm. some chemical reaction. But they're the size of football fields, right? And he said he's hosted people from other countries um, like not first world and they get up there and see these basins of clean water like that you could ultimately drink you really want to wait until it's chlorinated mm -hmm. but you know you could um, and they they break down they're like this is crazy like it's <laughs> it, like yeah uh, what attributes or skills do you find most important for success in your area of work uh, um, I mean, you got to know math, right? You yeah. need to know the fundamentals. That's always good. I, I think something I learned over time was being flexible is important. Um, you know, you, you're especially in consulting. You know, you're dealing with different clients. You got to adapt to that. You're dealing with different problems, which is part of what's fun about it. Um, you got to adapt to that. You might have to do something that you really don't love, right? Like a HVAC calculation, which you know, you've done a hundred times, mm -hmm. you know, it, um, but there's always something new or nuanced mm -hmm. to it. So, um, I guess staying flexible, keeping an open mind, um, probably some of the most important pieces. Communication is well, another. Communication, people. absolutely. People skills. Is, yeah, is it really, good. yeah, you, you don't, it's hard to teach it, I think, but, you know, you yeah. learn it through other things. Well, we, we keep emphasizing to our students that, uh, Communication is very important. Um, they're exposed to it in when they do their presentations, etc. But we, I'm, I'm personally, I keep insisting it's something very, very important. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether you write an email or you draft a report, it has to be professional. It has to be yeah, clear. Yeah, and it's funny. I, one of the other reasons I think I kind of leaned towards more technical studies was because I was not good at English in high school, right? I was like, I felt like every time I changed grades through high school, I got a new English teacher and they wanted something different. And I was like, wait, I, so I'd start out getting, you know, C's probably. And eventually by the end of the year with that teacher, start to get B pluses, A's, A minuses. I'd there. sort of adapt, but then next year it would reset. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> why, how is this so different? Like, what? Um, and it really, w it was me, and then I took a technical writing class here, mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember the level or the course, but it's it was... It's 300 level, it's yeah. English 390, I it think. It was yeah. excellent. It yeah. was, it made me enjoy English again, frankly, because <laughs> um, I did not before, because it was like, it, it was what an engineer wants. It broke it down, like, right, exactly. here's how to be concise, here's how to be clear, take out all the unnecessary words, right? Um, Hopefully I did that for when I speak later. <laughs> <laughs> what, what advice would you give a fresh graduate who, may, who might be interested in, 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 in a career path like yours? Um, go to the career fairs. I mean, honestly, the industry needs talent. It needs good engineers. There's no question about that. So there's opportunities. Um, you know, I, I, I liked my trajectory, but... I didn't experience anything else, so I can't speak to it, but yeah. I, starting in consulting was nice because you get a pretty wide variety yeah, of work. Yeah. You meet a lot of different clients. You see a, different, a lot of different types of utilities and how they're run. That said, you could easily start on the utility side where you get direct interaction with the operations, which is really what makes it go well, And you right. might end up in consulting. I mean, it's, Yeah, it's, you yeah, can go the other yeah, way. The right, path, exactly. It's, um, it's, but. Reversible as you yeah. say, thermal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, the best advice would just be to, you know, do some research on it. You know, the utilities, you know, were required by the EPA, right, to send out reports of drinking water quality. You could just start by looking at that. It comes, I want to say, every other, every six months with your with that one one of the bills. Mm -hmm. um, read about it's pretty pretty simple process. It's been around for quite a while. There's newer processes. You know, we're moving from the sedimentation and slow sand filtration, which has been around for literally hundreds of years, mm -hmm. to membranes and things like yeah. that, which are um, pretty cool, especially as we deal with more and more emerging contaminants. You know, there's always a new challenge on the horizon too, as we um, it, it look, are able to detect more and start to see more and more contaminants in the water, we want to treat for them, right? They, we can make it better. The balance comes in at what cost, right? Exactly. Everybody's paying for this. It's not a tax per se, even in government, municipal, it's a separate bill, yeah. but it still has to be reasonable. Um, 
because it's fun. It's necessary. You have to fight right? It's fundamental. Equilibrium, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can't just make it deionized water because that would cost a ton. And not to mention you're drinking like less than one percent of it. Most of it goes to water the grass or fight fires. Exactly. Um, and yet we treat it all to the same degree. So. I am curious. I don't think I'll see it in our in my generation, but in future generations, if we'll go to like a decentralized treatment where it gets treated part way in the plants, consolidated, where you could cook clean with it, shower safely, and then the consumption piece happens locally, separately, in the home. exactly. Yeah. Oh, so okay, okay. So like in in the house or something, but but it I, totally shifts the regulatory from federal government or even local means down to the most local level like plumbing code at that point and then who's keeping that Very, thing yeah. changing your filters and making sure you're because if you don't that, change the filter yeah. that's also bad it actually brings the responsibility to the customer yeah or or the code enforcement or the code somehow enforcement, yeah. but so again I don't like I said I don't see it happening in our lifetime but the cost of treating water as we detect more and more contaminants and get it better and better is and getting making, more expensive yeah, you're making a very good point uh, should we spend the same amount of money to to treat water that's going to go into water in the the, the lawn yeah. and the water that we actually put in our bodies? Yep. So that's that's yeah. it. Yeah. And you know, uh, I'll plug. I have a an aluminum bottle here, which <laughs> I don't usually do, but <laughs> um, you know, the, the standards for you know tap water are higher than you know, or at least as high as the FDA. It's and, EPA versus FDA regulation okay. and. The EPA is usually a little bit ahead. Okay. Um, that said, you know, there's a lot of variability. We can't <coughs> test every single tap, right? And yeah. there's a big network of pipes that have to deliver it. And so depending if you've ever it, been inside a water pipe, it's not pretty, no. but it's clean. It's, it's technically clean and safe, but it's like, what's that slime? It's <laughs> like, oh, it's clean slime, but or whatever. But it's um, uh, how many people work at your company? Uh, we have we have about fifteen hundred people on the water side okay. across eight states. Um, about eight hundred of them, eight to nine hundred, are the frontline operations, like people out in the field visiting the well houses, making sure everything's the chlorine pump is dosing correctly. You know, the pump is pumping, the tank is full, not leaking. You know, mm -hmm. um, and we see all the problems, right? Um, and then there's the uh, the other six hundred. 700 are sort of the, the back end support and that ranges from you know HR finance admin engineering um, and then also IT right and IT is interesting in the water industry right now you know we kind of lag I think is fair to say it's an old school industry but we're starting to get to these smart networks and I spent some time in between consulting, I guess it was still technically consulting, but a different sort of niche firm, looking at smart net water networks. And it is still a pretty cheap commodity, right? It's not gas, it's not gonna explode, it's not petroleum, it's not super expensive. So there's a balance between how much do you invest in the infrastructure to make it intelligent and protect every last drop versus, well, if it leaks, it's not that expensive. It costs, you know, fractions of a penny to treat, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you have enough water to go around, but there are places in the world where mm -hmm. every drop is right. very, very yeah, important. You yeah, you go out to California and it's a different story, oh. or Texas. We have operations in Texas and it is, it's tough. It, um, it's a whole different... I spent 10 years in the, uh, between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, in the UAE, yeah. and yeah. Uh, they have a lot more oil than they have water, yeah. so it is, it is a commodity that they... That's yeah. interesting. How does the, your, your company view diversity? So that's an interesting one. So um, obviously diversity is a priority, right? And working <coughs> as a consultant for municipal clients, it was often required by contract. There would be okay. so hey, the we want 10% minority owned business or women owned business as part of this contract. And that was because it was municipal, right? Mm -hmm. We're investor owned, so slightly different than municipal. It's not required by government, mm -hmm. but we did up until this year have a metric on our, our scorecard for um, compensation, like um, performance, mm -hmm. that was a diversity metric. We had an in-house diversity metric, so for you know the makeup of the actual comp direct employees, and then a metric for, similar to a municipality, a certain target of vendors, suppliers, contractors, consultants. Um, that said, so we do still have the metric, but we've, we've disassociated it from compensation okay. for legal reasons, right? <laughs> uh, you probably know more about that than I do. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. That was yeah. very informative. I learned a lot of things that I'm sure our students will 
would definitely appreciate your, your comments and uh, thank you. Yeah, thank Very you. Interesting.